Welcome to the Three Haunted Podcast, where we bring you all things horror, supernatural, folklore, mythology, and all things that go bump in the night. Hey guys, this is your co-host Ashley, gorilla girl filmmaker, lunar goddess, and cinephile. Hey y'all, this is your guest ghost host, Lila Kay. I'm coming at you from the mile high to bring you chills and thrills. And I'm your co-host, John Thomas, ghost hunter, super smartass, and film lover extraordinaire. What's up, goals, gals, and all of my amazing meta pals? In today's episode, we will be talking about mediums and tarot cards. What exactly does a medium do? Can tarot cards tell your future? Join us and our very special guest to find out. But first, a word from our network sponsor. Are you looking for more awesome podcasts? Head on over to withoutyourhead.com for access to the Without Your Head podcast network, where you'll find a variety of podcasts sure to keep you entertained and coming back for more. I didn't laugh that time, did I? (laughs) (laughs) And now you did. (laughs) Bring us back, John. (laughs) All right, everybody. Welcome back. Like Ashley said, we, or did you say, we have a special guest. We did. I did, yeah. actually. Okay. I, I'm so used to hearing it that it just automatically goes in my brain anyway. So, yeah. Let's try that one again. What he's saying is he only half listens to me. <laughs> just the beginning part, <laughs> if I'm being honest. I wait for yeah, my cue. Right. I wait for my cue, and I'm like, okay, that's where I go. And then I still mess it up. <laughs> that's all right. All right. Welcome back, everybody. Like Ashley said, we do have a very special guest today. Her name is Lady Luna. Thank you for coming on to the show. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I'm very happy to be in your show, and I love your podcast. Thank you. It's oh. so good to hear. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome, and it's always nice to hear that somebody listens to the show. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. But it is nice yes. to you know to to find that like people are actually listening. So thank you for coming on. This is very exciting, yes. um, on so many levels. I mean, let's not forget the irony. We have Ashley Lunar Goddess meets Lady yeah. Luna. It's, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that could be like a Clifford the Big Red Dog storybook or something. Like, <laughs> uh, it's so funny that you mentioned Clifford. We just watched that movie like earlier this last week. <laughs> <laughs> it was cute. You just got to bring that up. <laughs> so I would like to ask, because I do have like the lunar love, where did Luna come from? The Lady Luna. Is that just a part of your name or is that part no, of... No, honestly, came. I met this girl, a friend, and her and her husband were playing in a bar. And she invited my, myself and another friend's. And we went the first time, the second time, the, the third time she said to me, why you don't bring your cards? And I said, what am I going to do in a bar with the cards, right? <laughs> so we went, they were singing, and then she says, and we have Lady Luna. And I keep just watching. Suddenly the light was on me, and I was like, oh, my gosh. Oh, that's me. <laughs> oh, okay. And I was like, Lady Luna. Okay. So this is how I start everything. It felt right, though, didn't it? it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, once you realized they were talking about you. I, I know, because it's like, oh, somebody's going to hear. Who is she? Maybe no, so another singer. And I was like, oh. <laughs> that's me. Yeah, that's me. And this is how it started. I love yeah. that. I like it, yeah. That's uh, great. So you are a medium and a tarot card reader, right? Correct. Amongst other, know, yes. I'm sure, gifts yes. that you have. <laughs> um, to, to you, what does it mean to be a medium? Basically, for me, it's a big satisfaction to start with that because I'm very honored that I'm the, the vessel between the spirits on the other side and to the living in this side means that I can pass messages that the, the human needs to listen and to get that peace that sometimes they listen something from the other side because they were not able at the time that the peace, pe- person passed it. And they gave, it gave them peace. You cannot imagine to see their faces when it's like, a, okay, I thought that was upset of me. I thought they didn't forgive me. I thought all those things, you know, 
it's a nice, nice thing to do and also takes a long time because it's not like a, I called you, I text you, you know, I just dial and that is it. No, you have to have the process because sometimes the spirit doesn't show at first. It's like they have to feel comfortable. How old were you when you realized that you could communicate with the spirit world? That I realized I was in my teddies that I saw and was part of growing up like it's okay but hush hush my first one was when I was seven that was my grandfather mm. wow. but it's like uh, was kind of normal but at the same time we don't talk outside the home yeah so it was accepted inside of the home but n mm -hmm. not publicized yeah but through <laughs> from seven to until Terry I used to feel see and hear things and hear the spirits so are communicated, but I was like, uh, maybe it's just for me. Oh, I see. So you, you didn't realize that they were trying to pass much messages like to others. Yes. <laughs> As so, you were pretty young at seven yeah. to see your grandfather. I was. Um, did that? I mean, was that pretty scary, or did you? Because it's part of your gift, you just knew what it was. When I saw him, I started talking to him. And, I, and, and he started talking to me, and that was the day that was the funeral. So when my mother came home with the rest of the family, say I saw abuelito, grandfather, mm -hmm. and she said she saw that I was saying if she saw him, and she said yes, yeah, she's he was in the funeral, blah blah blah, and then it's like no, he was here, and I took her where I saw him, and then she said to me, he came to say goodbye to you. Wow. And that's okay. Yeah. Ah, okay. Wow. But I didn't comprehend what means he came to say goodbye. I was just saying my word that I saw him and I was so happy. I love that it was a very positive reaction that you had, that you weren't scared, that you weren't sad. It was like a very joyous event. Correct. Yeah. One well, that you embraced it so naturally, too. It was. You just accepted it as it was. This is this is what it is. And in a child's mind, that was so real. So wasn't for me any a scary moment. You know, I, I'm more scary from humans than from the spirit. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> True that. That's yes. fair. Um, so being that you're able to connect with the spirit world as a medium, is that the gift that helps you with tarot reading, like the tarot cards? Or is that completely different? I don't know. It's, I, I see that this, the gift comes with the intuition. Like the intuition mm. is the big umbrella. And then there is mediums. I can have the intuition for readings, for healing, different ones. So I think it's not necessarily go hand by hand, but mm -hmm. they intertwine. I have so many questions when it comes to tarot. Oh. <laughs> Did you teach yourself how to do tarot or uh, like tarot readings or was it something that made, like you apprenticed or how does one go about learning to read tarot cards? <laughs> Going back for the for your first question, I always like the cards. I, I, I think they are beautiful that you can dive in. And I used to grab it, the first one, and wasn't the, it was about fairies the first one that I got, and I was dreaming, diving in them. Then I, I saw, oh, there is a tarot class. I'm going. And I was like, oh, my gosh. So I went to the first class, and, and I didn't feel comfortable. So I tell the teacher and said, you teach really well, but I feel that this is not for me because when I see that car, it doesn't say what you say. And she laughed. Oh. And she laughed. And I said, what? I don't want to wa waste your time. I don't want to waste. And she said, no, no, no. Keep going, but what you are you having is very intuitive. So take this class as a, another learning, but don't change the way that you do it. And I was like, oh, it's another way. So I never put it all together. I just let it flow. Now, how people can learn. Mm, first, it's very important that you develop your intuition. Okay. And don't memorize, like when you are at school and going to memorize this book or, or something. It's more just let it flow. Breathe, meditate, or relax. 
and let it be the vessel between the divine or the universe and the instrument, the tool that is the cards. People can read books, yes, people can take classes, but also can trust more themselves in the way to learn. Yeah, especially for you, you know, she said the cards had one meaning, and to you, you're like, nope, that doesn't mean that to me. So, <laughs> but but it's good that she she also clarified the the free will. Right. Mm -hmm. She wasn't the pushy person to say, no, you have to do it in this way. No, she was like, okay, but there is another option, there is another way, and I learned that from her. It's interesting because they have like the standard decks, right? And I don't remember how many cards that were the classics. 78. Like the King of Man and, yeah. Yeah, and just like the traditional um, cards. But I love over the past few years that there are so many different decks out there mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. art and with meaning. And um, I have always had a question and I've been a little too nervous to ask it at like a metaphysical shop because I'm like, it's going to sound silly, I'm sure, but... Um, for me, what is the difference between a tarot deck and an oracle deck? Okay, so basically the oracle is something that is, uh, they have already a message. Mm -hmm. And most of the time you use it for the card of the day. So I wake up, I do my meditation. Let's see what is in a store for me today. And you read it, you meditate about it. And at the end of the day, when you come home, you can look at it if, and evaluate your day compared for what the car, okay? Oh, okay. The, the modern Oracle decks, they have a spread, but they are based on the tarot spreads. Uh, now the tarot is the tool that you use when you are given or advice or clarification to the client. So they, they are 78 in the traditional one, 78 uh, cards divided into the major arcana and the minor arcana. And the major, the way that they, you can see is like a storybook. Also with the tarot, you can apply numerology. What is zero? Zero is the beginning of nothing to nine. 12, no, 21, sorry, 221. <laughs> I was thinking in numerology, okay? And 221. And then the core cards, and then the, that belong to the minor arcana, and that is kind of the, how would I say this? So this is the storybook, this is the main character, and these one are the qualities, more qualities to the materialistic plane. The major is more the archetype. Okay. So it helps clarify what the major... To add, clarify, or needs that you need to focus more based on the archetype. Okay. There's so much. <laughs> <laughs> and you just taught all this to yourself. <laughs> Intuition. Yeah. I know. Do you find over time as your energy, you know ebbs and flows and changes do you find that you gravitate to different decks and like maybe one that you were very connected to a few years ago now is just a pretty deck but with like sentimental value but there is a different deck that you are then connected to yes and actually I collect decks I have I have a little <laughs> bit more than a hundred Oh, wow. wow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's and, a pretty and, solid collection. I know, yeah. because all they are pretty, all, all they talk, but the ones that I use with the clients are different. It's like I have right. this one for me to look at them, if you want to put it like that. I have this one for me to work in certain seasons. Right. Okay. And it, it, for me, it's not like, oh, let's see which one. It's like I can pass him by and there is what happened with this deck. And I start, oh, it's here. And now I get it glued. We are best friends. And we <laughs> keep going. And sometimes it's like, okay, I want to go to you, to the store, and read. And he's like, okay, come with me. That's so interesting. Mm -hmm. What I think is really cool about, like, having different um, decks with different artwork is that 
before tarot was used for the occult for divination it was it was just a card game Mm -hmm. that just had really pretty pictures on it Mm -hmm. it was given to the wealthy because there was no printing press back then when these cards became popular so they were hand painted and each deck was very different and so it's really cool to see that we had those values of art back then in you know the 15th 16th century and we still hold those values you know Mm -hmm. pretty close we still want that aesthetic of oh I really like this one this one speaks to me this one looks really nice it's just very cool to see that follow through I think it's interesting too like the first tarot um, deck that was created for divination actually was inspired heavily by Egyptian beliefs and Egyptian backgrounds because we know Mm -hmm. A lot of their belief systems and traditions um, still very much carries through with the occult to this day. And people hear the occult and they think, ooh, bad word. Mm-hmm. But it's like, it's not. And what was it? He got his from the book of, how do you say that? Thought? Thought. Thought. And so um, I think it's interesting to see some of the decks out there still kind of go back to that with the Egyptian influence and the hieroglyphics on the cards. But there are so many decks out there. I think it's cool. One of the shops in Denver, is it Isis? Yeah, there's Isis Bookstore. Isis is, yeah, one of them, yeah. Yeah, it's a really neat place. It actually used to be an old funeral home that's now a metaphysical shop. Yeah. Very serene energy when you walk in, actually. Yeah. That's great. Um, very calming, serene energy. But they actually have in the back corner of the shop this old like glass bookshelf where they keep antique tarot decks. And it's locked up, and you right. can ask to like look at them. Yeah. But yeah, it's 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 really cool because you can see some of these decks are really old. Yeah. Um, and I don't believe they're for purchase. It's mm. just this is part of their collection. Um, some of them I think are, but some are not. And yeah. it's interesting because I think the one... When I looked at the cabinet, the one that drew my my attention the most, there was this box, and it's black. It, there's nothing on it. No writing, nothing, just a black box. And I was just like, I want to see those cards. <laughs> 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 like the least colorful mm. and expressive. It's just like my eyes are drawn to it. I'm like, what's that? I want to look at those. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they didn't let me look at them, but I wanted to. <laughs> um <laughs> Now, speaking of tarot cards and being connected to them, you you have a connection with your cards, your deck. When people come in and they shuffle your cards, do they create um, temporary connections to your deck as well? Is there something that you have to do after each reading to cleanse your decks or something to kind of prevent those strings from attaching? So I like when people... Each reader has different system, but I like when people touch the cards and shuffle them and then handle back because this is their reader reading for them. So they are, they have to have the signature. Okay. And what I do after I do a reading or between readings, if you want to put it like that in, in fairs is I clean set with some Reiki symbols. Mm-hmm. So this is like, let's say I'm in this fair and I'm reading, reading, reading. Between I do the, the symbol to be clear for the next person. And when I come home, I do the big cleansing. <laughs> okay. So I do, sometimes I do sage. Sometimes I do under the moon. Sometimes I leave it the whole cycle, the sun and the moon. Okay. okay? And that goes also with the energy between the the client and myself. So if I do a reading to you, for example, and it's done, I already disconnect with you at the point that we say this is done. So you go with your energy, I stay with mine. Yeah. So, <laughs> Is that something that you had to learn to do um, to, to be able to... Because I feel like there's so many pages out there about like how to break connections and how to cut the cord and... Um, and it's like, you know how to just do it. Like, no problem. <laughs> you can cut any of those. And I guess they are very superficial connections because you haven't had to, you know, truly go out and spend time with this person and really strengthen that. But it's still a connection. Mm-hmm. And you're able to just release those pretty quickly. Do you think that was practice? I learned different techniques, but the best that works for me in the moment is the help for my guides. Okay. So it's like, okay, I'm done. I don't 
know if it's because doing for so long, but I don't see the difference, but I, I know that it's done. In the beginning, it's like, okay, help it. me to clean this, help me to cut this. But now it's like, a, okay, it's done. Like a, the, the part I say, it's done, really, it's done. It's already coming with the, with the cutting, with the separation. Okay. So before, when you initially started, it was asking for them to help. Yeah. And now you've worked so well with each other for so long that it just, it's done and it happens. Yes, yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> You said you have guides. Mm-hmm. How did you find your guides? Or did they find you? How how did that work? Oh, my gosh. I think we find each other, to be honest. Is the desire I do. There is someone there, you know. And I have not just guides, um, like uh, beings of light, but I have my ancestors. So knowing that they are, they are here with me, there is one connection. And that connection helped me. To, to find the guides, the spiritual ones, if you want to put it like that, but it's more like um, beings of, li- of light that they are there. You can feel them. Yes. <laughs> I can honestly say um, I, I've never been able to figure that part out, like guides, because I know I've met people and they're just like, you need to connect with your ancestors. You need to connect with like spirit totems and ask for your guide, ask for a guide to come to you. And it's like, okay, I'll try. And I don't feel anything. (laughs) So I don't know if I do something wrong or maybe I'm just not feeling the guide. Like there's a block. I don't know. I, I don't think there is anything wrong or right. It's more that you have to be open. People has to be open to receive. That doesn't mean, okay, I want a tall guide, for example, or I want a, an extraterrestrial, dimensional, multidimensional, <laughs> but comes the universe and see that I'm not ready for that is going to send me something else that is going, or someone else, to connect me to that. But if I'm thinking, no, I just want this, oh, so the universe is sending me, I'm ignoring it. But if I go to the other side that I say, okay, I'm open, this is what I want, but i open to receive whatever you send me at the time. The universe is going to send you what you need. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you have to be very humble to accept that. So they send you more. <laughs> Question on that, how do you open yourself up to receive that, but not in a way that is, I guess, too open, where it could, like, backfire, or is that a possibility? Is there a way that you can open yourself up too much? Never is too much to open to the blessings of the universe, but I understand what you are saying on the other hand. So if you are open, when you start meditating, when you start um, learning how to manage your breathing, you start being open. If you put the intention, I want to connect with higher vibration, with higher energy, and protect yourself so the low energy doesn't come in place is one way. How do you do uh, to prevent that? First of all, I'm going to talk about my personal thought. You don't need to be under any influence of any substance to get that connection. Why? Because low energy, they like that codependency, that dependency, that low vibration. So you have to be in this set of mind that this is what I want to connect. If you wanted to connect to the dark energy, okay, but no, that there is consequences and ask yourself if you are ready for that, okay? And the same question goes, if I want to connect to the high vibration, am I willing to work my own energy to, to raise to that vibration and also practice grounding? Because a lot of people, they do meditation and breathing and they live in the air. They are not grounded. And that is also an imbalance, I'm on that one. <laughs> Girl, put I your think roots I'm too down. Up, too up on the high. I know. I need to put the roots in. Walk, walk more in the grass. Go to hug more trees. <laughs> go to hug yeah. more trees. You know that, guys. My homework is I have to hug more trees. Yeah. There you go. I think that that's pretty good homework. Right. No, I appreciate I, I like that. Um, you answering that because it's it's like 
I, I personally want to find out how to connect to that higher energy, to that higher vibration. But I think the thing that stops me personally is I am a bit afraid of, okay, well, what if I do something and I do it wrong? And then now I'm exposing myself to this negative energy and I have to protect myself before I can do that. I would love to learn how to get to that point. And so I think that that's really interesting to know. Do you know what is something that is very important is don't have fear. Mm -hmm. Because if you have fear, you are created certain environment for energy that love fear. This sounds very much what we discussed last yeah. week. Yeah. I love like the when connection. You're, when you're, I do too. Like everything she's saying, I'm like, bing, 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 yep. bing. Yeah. It's, it's like it's all the very connected. But it's what we discussed last week too was the if you vibrate at that low level, that's what's going to call back to you. Mm-hmm. And you have to be able to elevate and raise your vibrations so that anything that does call back is at that level of light vibration. And believe it or not, whatever what you eat helps to raise your vibration. Oh, tell me more about that. (laughs) (laughs) Ashley's face just lit up. That was great. Oh, no. I'm like, I'm excited. Let's hear about that. (laughs) In my experience, eating too much red meat put me Mm -hmm. down. So doesn't let that, um, that stage that I can elevate easy because it's too heavy. So yes, eat your vegetables, eat your fruits, <laughs> things like that helps because you are all energy and you are going to connect and you're eating a lot of uh, potato chips, your energy is clouded. Fasting is another way to do it. I fast like um, for five days, not too much, like every other month. <laughs> She said not too much. Yeah. That would be hangricidal. Yeah. I would kill somebody if I didn't eat for five days. <laughs> hangricidal. I like that word. <laughs> that they, yeah, well, I would be. I would be very hangricidal. Yeah, I don't um, want to see that. I think that takes a lot of discipline, though, to be able to fast for five days. Yeah, for five. Yeah. But that's very admirable. I can't imagine the yeah. clarity. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So you said substances mm-hmm. can lower the vibration. And we know a lot of more ancient traditions would use different su- substances to be able to, c- to mm-hmm. commune with uh, the spirit world. So it seems like some people have positive mm-hmm. experiences and some have negative. So <laughs> she just <laughs>, laughs. Um, I'm not saying I use substances to commune with anybody, but I am curious why some people are able to use different substances, whether it be currently nowadays, people will go on shroom trips and say they talked to like 50 gods, um, and others have awful experiences. Is it just their state of mind before they go into that? It's preparation. If you're talking with ancient people, they know just wake up and smoke or drink something. They, they went to a process growing up to see how, until what point they can tolerate that substance. Versus nowadays, sometimes people say, oh, I want to try and maybe I have a bad day and I want to escape or whatever, whatever. But they are not prepared for that. That's the reason that when you do peyote and ayahuasca, and there is another one that I don't remember, they always suggest that you have someone to help you, to guide you through the process. So in that way, if you go too far, there is someone there to, to take care of you, in another words. To tether you back in. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> or guide I've you. I've always been terrified. Or guide you. Like of that. Did you just laugh, John? Yes, I I've did. always been terrified of it just because I feel like I've already experienced such a high amount of things without any kind mm-hmm. of substances. Right. I feel like putting myself on a substance would just be too much. Like the filter would be completely gone and yeah. it would be way too overwhelming for me. So, But I was curious about that because we do see in a lot of the ancient cultures mm-hmm. that was one way to commune with the spirits. But to your point, they spent their life preparing, preparing for yeah. that journey. How do you feel about online tarot reading? <laughs> and I don't mean like doing a virtual reading. I notice there's so many websites out there now where it's like, click a card and it'll tell you your, you know, reading for the day. Right. <laughs> yeah, oh my goodness. Yeah. 
And it's like, you don't even know who I am. But it's a just, I, I did, I, I, I'm curious because that seems to be a lot like the astrology where you could get like your horoscope, your daily horoscope. Now you could get like your daily tarot card reading. So I was curious, mm-hmm. like, is that just silly? No, no, no. <laughs> be- I, I'm laughing because I have that curiosity. So I went one time, let's pick a mm-hmm. car. And that was so... <laughs> I, that was so weird for me because it's a computer that I'm clicking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm very uh, sensitive, so I have to touch when I'm touching the mm-hmm. mouse. <laughs> okay. But the result was, uh, I think I cheat on that because I did, <laughs> and then I did it again <laughs> with the same question. Yeah, not the right card. <laughs> no, but was with the same question and always was the same card. Oh, huh. so I was like, a, it, interesting. No, miento, miento. No, it's like I ask same question, different card that doesn't have to do uh. with anything. But another wow. time was okay. the, always the same card for different question, and I was like, a, okay, yeah. is it, am I interfering mentally? Kind of, I challenge the computer with what I feel, you know. So, what do I feel is um, for some people? I think that works. And like everything, the answer is not in the cards. This is just a tool. And humans have free will to take in or not whatever the cards are saying. So if you are going to follow whatever the card said and it's like you cannot function during the day if you don't have the card of the day because you like the computer, okay. It's a free choice. I believe a lot in free choice. And I believe that even I tell to my clients, I say, this is what the card says, but remember, you have a free will. It's not set in a stone. I do think that the internet has created this accidental, like, connected consciousness. And so I do wonder, is silly for us who, like, came before the computers were common household items, um, it's silly as it is for some of these apps, like, really, you're going to... Re- tell me these things. I do wonder though, it's like, well, we are connecting ourselves in a different mental energetic way through a new tool, a new device. So is it possible at some point to be connected in a way that does somehow provide that kind of, I I don't know that kind of connection, but then it's like, then that goes way too black mirrors on me. And I'm like, nope, it's just (laughs) Yeah. Well, I think that that's interesting, like Lady Luna was saying, like, it's pretty much a matter of perspective. If you're getting that reading online, and and that is what you believe, then you're going to implement that in the day, you're going to implement that in your life. But if you do come at it, and you're like, ah, that's, that's not going to happen, that's not going to help me, then maybe it won't. That's, it's just however you view the cards. It's how much you're willing to believe in that reading whether or not it's online Mm -hmm. I'm a bit hesitant when it comes to doing things like that (laughs) online like like you're saying Ashley the horoscope readings things like that I take it with a grain of salt but that's just the skeptic in me but not everyone has that same level of skepticism well I read those uh, like just for fun I'll read those sometimes as they pop up on because like shape shape magazine sends me like emails <laughs> and like try this workout or try this you know health tip and then here's your daily horoscope and I'm like you have a very wide range of topics <laughs> shape magazine but um I will sometimes open the email just out of curiosity and I read the horoscope and I'm like that's a lot of people because there's a lot of Leos out there. Right. That's a lot of people that are going to be having a bad relationship today. So. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel sorry to all of you Leo brethren, but <laughs> maybe today is better for you. I do wonder if the tarot cards are similar to like what we discussed in the Ouija board, spirit board episode, where we already know in our subconscious the answer that we're looking for or the answer that we need. We already have that within us. We just haven't unlocked it. And so when we get those tarot card readings or something emerges on a Ouija board or a spirit board to a question we have, I do wonder if the reason you're able to say, no, that doesn't make sense for that card or no, that card doesn't apply is because we already know what the answer is. We just haven't brought it outside of that deeper surface level so then when that answer is reflected back to us through whether it be a message through spirit guides or a message through the board, 
we know when we're hearing like a truth or our truth because it was already in us. I don't know. I like how she always looks like she wants to laugh at me. (laughs) (laughs) I love you, Lady Luna. You better make you laugh. I always have a smile, believe me. I love it. I love it, though. So what you are asking is that, okay, in my experience, when somebody comes for a reading, they call a reading because I think it's the norm. But actually, people Mm -hmm. is coming for clarification, for something Mm -hmm. that they know or they want to hear like a second opinion in another level for, from a stranger. So it's about validation. Mm-hmm. And clarification for whatever okay. I think I, I need to do or, or going in the right path. Why? Because humans always need that affirmation, confirmation from third parties. Well, I, I have kind of a weird question. This kind of goes off of topic a little bit, but not really. When I was doing research... I um, got distracted and came upon Etsy, our favorite website here at Three Haunted, and I found people who make their own tarot cards, and I found some cool-looking ones. Uh, Ash, you'll love them. They're Pokemon cards. And I um, actually bought a deck, and I'm oh, waiting cool. on them to come. But How exciting. I, I just yeah. wonder, like, are those still like credible, you know, somebody else is making them, do they still work the way other cards would work? Okay, so if we go back in history, someone had the idea to create a deck based on whatever illumination had. So with the time you see there is more people that they are creating decks. And it's something, I love that, because you see different, but they are based in the traditional white deck, Right. So the only thing that will change in your case is Pokemon and have Meow right. and all those guys. I love Pokemon, okay? So, <laughs> That's and, fantastic. You can come back on the show anytime. And, and, and oh you know, goodness. I know it's a, a little bit off topic, but when my son was little, we have a cat. And what was the name? Meow. Because we were into Pokemon. <laughs> but anyway, it. so it, it's another way that people put it out, this is my feeling, but I identify with okay. animals or with cartoons or with animated things. Right. Okay. So the thing, the secret, if you want to put it like that, is when you receive your deck, what that picture talks to you. What do you feel when you see it? Okay. There is one way to learn tarot that they give you like a blank card and you color according of your feeling. So you are created your own. That's cool. One day it's going to be a Lady Luna deck. I know. <laughs> I know. Wow. Gonna, I'll buy it. I know. Wow. <laughs> so it, yeah. it's something that you, you put and create. Okay. Okay. It's, it's not right or wrong. People have creativity and they express it. And maybe this person who did Pokemon was identified and have some supernatural uh, call or, or something that make it do it that so it sounds like just really taking time to connect with your deck and what each card means to mm-hmm. you which is probably what people I don't want to say should because that's implying a judgment value but what people might want to consider doing when they do buy decks mm-hmm. no matter where you get them from is to take the time to really connect to your deck right um, that's the basic that's the basic even if you just buy a deck because Oh, that looks cute. And maybe one day I'm going to learn to, to read the tarot. Right. A lot of people say, oh, you, your first day has to be gifted. Mm, okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, right? Thank you for the gift, but I may or may not connect. Mm-hmm. Right. I love to go to buy mine because they, it's like when you buy clothes, shoes, you know? Ah, you have to try. You have to feel it. Yes. So the same with the deck. You you just can grab the box and if it's talking to you, okay, let's go home. I was actually gifted like the little mini uh, tarot card uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, like forever ago from a friend that um, had studied all the Wicca stuff and all of that. And I just, I never got rid of the card deck and I don't have any of the other books for the stuff that he gave me. It's just kind of cool that I still have that. So, so do you want a hint? 
take one card. You shuffle right. them. No, just shuffle them right. in your yeah. own privacy. And you pick up one. Yeah. And you look at the car, okay? And what the car talks to you. Okay. Okay. And then you write it down if you want it or you record it, whatever. Right. Or you have memory, okay? Just keep it in the storage. Mm -hmm. Right. And right. do it before you go to bed, okay? And then... You tell the car, you know what? This is what I see or what I feel. But now that I'm going to sleep, you give me your message. So you put it under your pillow and you go to sleep. Okay? Okay. The next day, when you open your eyes, after you're stretching and all, everything, you pull the car and whatever comes to your mind, write it. Okay. On the other side of the one that you wrote the night before. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then do whatever you have to do. You go to the bathroom, you make coffee. And then when you have your coffee or your tea, you can compare the meaning that you saw, the meaning what the car, and if that has a little booklet, yes. you can see the booklet as a reference. Okay. Okay? Gotcha. There is no right or wrong if you feel that the car inspired you go to the ocean. Uh, the car told you to say take a vacation, and the booklet said you need to take a plane to Lululand, no? <laughs> <laughs> what is important is what resonates with you. Okay. And most of the time is the first thing. The first thing, that I see, this is what I feel. This is what I see. Gotcha. Okay. Very yeah. cool. Yeah, I'll definitely try that. The feeling is super important. It just We just see that message continuously popping up this season is to feel. Yes. What do you feel this means? What do you feel? Like, what is your intuition? I feel like this season is just all about intuition. Yes. Yeah. And learning to connect with that intuition. Right. And it's also to stop the monkey talk. Experience and allow yourself to say to the brain, I hear you, but this time I'm going to let heart, the feeling. Okay. Let, let's talk to the heart. And I know it's very hard because we are busy people. We are trained or imposed to be more thinking than feeling. But to be honest, I've been seeing more after the pandemic, a lot of people that is more open to feel. Yes, we mm. think, but let's, let's also try the feeling part. You will hear a lot, oh, you have to be gifted. You cannot buy your own. And in, and in my head, it's like, well, see if it's bad luck, I don't know, because I haven't had that. Okay. Well, yeah, that truth doesn't resonate with you. Mm -hmm. So whereas that might have been the truth for that individual person, right. that's not necessarily like the exactly. universal truth. Right. <laughs> so you have to, uh, uh, mainly in all these metaphys metaphysical things, is to understand that you have free will. Right. That you are open and you, you, you can choose. And if you choose and you didn't like it, you can change. How do I take away someone's free will? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I was to, like, is she really asking that? Go back right to no, last it was a joke. I just like, <laughs> I just like to a get a reaction second. out of Lady Luna. I just like to see her get. <laughs> oh, man. Her face was, mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. she's going to send me to my room. <laughs> so you go to Etsy and you find that lady with the spells. And no, I'm just joking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> those are scary. Yes, those yeah. are scary. <laughs> <laughs> let's just say that's hypothetically possible that's terrifying <laughs> i do really love that a lot of this season and a lot of what we've been talking about is learning to build your intuition learning to like raise your energy and raise your vibrations and i i feel like this was a little sign for me as well and and you know maybe people listening when this does come out maybe this is something that they needed too and like listening to the podcast listening to those episodes and saying oh how do I do that I don't, I don't know I just I think it's so cool to like realize that we're gonna have that effect on other people outside of the conversation that we are having right now between the four of us right right I think it's like everything happens for a reason basically and we've had the guests that we've had on this season so far for reasons for 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 Ashley and for for you lie and who knows I mean for me or for even a guest so 
and like you said for the listeners as well so that's just I, it's really cool <laughs> a lot more people are open right now right mm-hmm. to different being challenged in their traditional way of thinking and with that though I feel like we live in a very conditioned society that is very heavy on consumerism and materialism and so I do think that people do feel well if I buy it then it all works like if I buy this xyz items I'm going to be open and my vibrations are going to be high or if I pay for these you too can be a shaman for ninety nine ninety nine <laughs> online. Like, yes. it's going to work. Um, right. But I think that the, the message that I feel very strongly is that the work has to be done completely in yourself. Kind of like you've been saying, Lady Luna, those are just tools. But the real true connection is within yourself. So learning to love yourself and believe in yourself. And we, we've heard this before last time. Being, a, being able to believe that you are powerful, you are strong, you are capable, mm-hmm. and to love yourself and trust yourself. We oftentimes forget we have to trust us too. Yeah. <laughs> so yes. We have to truly trust ourselves that we are capable and that we are safe and we can do these things. We are capable of connecting. As scary as it may be, we're capable of connecting to things we don't know. And no matter what you buy, that has to happen inside for those tools to work. Like, you can't buy the hammer and say, okay, where's my house? <laughs> like, my house is built, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> right. You, you, you do have to do the work. And um, I love that we've had guests to echo what you guys have said. I love that we've had guests like Lady Luna and others that we've had on to help remind us of those things, but also to show that like it's not something that just one or two people can do. Not we capable. all are capable of having that intuition. Right. Yep. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah. Oof. Yep. I'm shooketh. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everybody yeah. born with a gift, but it's your right. choice to develop to the point that you want it. We don't talk about this a lot because we tend to be more of like an adult-oriented podcast. But when it comes to gifts, kids show it at a young age, but it gets shut down really fast. So for listeners who maybe are afraid of that and like their kids, like what do you do with a kid that's gifted, I guess? (laughs) Okay. What I suggest to my clients, to be honest, because sometimes comes in the cards is you... Do you have kids? Yes. Okay. So there is one that is see things, you know, because I cannot see what is seen, but I know I feel that is something. And they open the eyes and it's like, uh, yeah, but I don't know what to do. I said, okay, just listen. Yeah. Just listen. Let the child express. No, not say, okay, but don't be afraid or you must be afraid. No, just listen and ask questions. How that make you feel? I don't know. But but what do you mean by I don't know? This is I'm open to you as a, to you child that you are in a safe place where you can talk about it, okay? And that approach also helps for other things that happen in the child's life. I feel secure talking to you about it. But if you go and say this is wrong, maybe the child in the moment, you think, oh, he's not doing it. But in the future, they start coming with fears, insecurities. Because if I, hush, hush, because if I say this, they are going to think that I have some mental illness or I'm losing it. Or the blocks that you, you turn into be an adult and you have blocks and why so you have to start working to releasing that uh, ancestral connection right. blockage to to be able to move on it becomes more yeah. of a shame yeah. yeah really quick i know we we kind of touched on some of that when we did the um ghost stories episode with Lila actually last season mm-hmm. when she was hearing voices and stuff like that uh we definitely said what what was it don't recommend googling all your symptoms yeah. um <laughs> especially now these days because this poor kid thought she was going crazy like you said I, I touched on that in the ghost stories episode but it was hard not having anyone who knew how to respond or say the right things and you know I I used to see spirits and hear spirits and be able to communicate 
very openly and very easily. And I have had such a hard time doing that since I was that age because I have to figure out how to reopen myself and how to communicate in a way that I had shut down so many years before. So I think, like you're saying, having that open conversation and not denying and not putting down any negativity towards your child is very important. And also some other blockage come, not because your parents are not open, but because you hear something, a comment, that this is not okay. Mm-hmm. So those things get a storage in, your, in the back, in your subconscious. And when things trigger, it's so sad that those, those things that has been storage start showing. And sometimes it's not asking questions. It's more like, tell me, you know, be, be that right. curious child to, to know what is going on. And that will give you the clues what I can do or to whom I can maybe I don't like to talk about it so but I have a good friend or I know someone that I can trust that can help but also as the child if it's okay if you tell and Susie or because maybe she can help you right it's interesting as much as people try to act like it is taboo and it's unacceptable and it's bad people are curious and people want to know otherwise you wouldn't see shops that have mediums and tarot readers and psychics, like if if there weren't enough people to keep that business open. So as much as people want to pretend like, oh, no, I don't believe in that. That's not real. Someone's visiting for the readings, and it's not the psychics because they're doing their own readings. Like <laughs> Someone is has questions, and I think the more that we can peel those layers back and say it's okay to ask questions, it's okay to want to know is there something more? What are these feelings? It'll be better. We'll be able to unblock more, and like you said, we'll be able to connect our intuition more. When I see that after the pandemic, the people who use that time to be indoors in quarantine or whatever you want to call, that use that time besides working from home, but use that time to get to know myself, to do things, to be creative, is the people that I see like tulips in a spring flowering with more independence, with more I want to know, I... I'm curious, I'm awakening, I'm here to learn because I, I, I can see the difference and I see more people awakening nowadays. It is beautiful. It is, it is because it's, it's really beautiful to see that experience when you're seeing people. The message I carry with me from this is it's great to vibrate high, but remember to put your roots down. (laughs) Yes, because you need that that balance. balance. (laughs) That is the opposite of people that they are so rooted that the universe is sending things and it's like, I don't know. So it's, it's balancing your chakras helps to have that balance, to be able to be connected to the high and to be rooted and find the middle point. And just remember that you can be balanced one day and not balanced the next. Be patient. But I mean, as so you go like, oh, okay. <laughs> you just cycle through. It's, kinda, it's fine. <laughs> we are ever changing and that's okay. But this is how we learn. This is how we learn. Because if you say, oh, I'm balanced today, for example, no? If you verbalize mm-hmm. and feels good and maybe tomorrow I'm not balanced, something is missing. Oh, I know what to do. Oh, feels good. So there is a point that you start knowing uh, your energy and is when you, okay, I, I think I'm unbalanced because I let my, my affect me things without knowing that it's not my fault. Or I took a uh, blame that was imposed on me. So I know, okay, so I'm learning how to put my boundary. I feel like I've learned so much. <laughs> and yet I still have so many questions. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the club. Like, <laughs> I know. I feel like as a medium, I always thought there was only one way that a person could be a medium, where they like channel somebody because you see it on TV, where like their eyes are rolling back and they're talking <laughs> for somebody, like somebody else is talking through them. And of course, that's just that's just. The but movies. sometimes that happens. Um, <laughs> don't say that to me <laughs> and now Ashley can't sleep again tonight <laughs> no, but to learn that no. like there's other it's not just that like there's so many being a medium is just being that connection between the spirit world and, and the, the physical human mm-hmm. world 
<laughs> she said that sometimes happens. <laughs> She likes to mess with me. No, but that's true. No, that's true. That happens. And it's really good. <laughs> it's good? It is. We're just going to, for just a moment, we're just going to tackle okay. that. So when someone's eyes are rolling back and someone else is speaking through them, isn't that, wouldn't that be like a form of possession? Yes, but remember when you are passing the message, you are like a straw. Mm-hmm. So it's like you are, uh, they borrowed your body. And pass the information. And not necessarily it has to be something weird that you turn the head or whatever, you know? <laughs> it's, it's, I, I don't know how you to know explain. nothing too crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's more that your, your voice changed. It's like uh, I, I'm a female and could be a male talking. It's, it's, it's something that is really nice. I experienced only one time. I didn't know what's going on. I was doing a reading to a person, and suddenly I went like kind of a trance. This is when I started reading for other people, okay? And I remember that I, weeks ago, I say I wish one day I can channel. I would like to do that. Why? I don't know. You know, I just felt that I want to do it. So this person comes, and I do the reading and everything, and then I feel like I wasn't there, but I was there. It's like the conversation of the reading got cut off. And then I keep doing the reading, and I see the people in front of me speechless. And I was like, maybe didn't like it, maybe it doesn't go through. I don't know, you know. But I finished the reading and everything, and they left. Next week, actually, they came back with someone else. Okay, okay. That was a mother, a daughter, and the aunt. And a mother and daughter the first time. Mother, daughter, and I brought the aunt. Okay, so I did a reading. Nothing happened there. So they are waiting, but they are not talking to me. And I was like, okay. So finally, she said, "We have a question." I said, "Sure, you know." So what happened last week? And I said, yeah, "I don't remember last week, but." And like me, no? So the woman said to me, the daughter said to me that my face changed, but that was very pleasant. But they knew that I was me, but I have another feature like in my forehead. And I was like, oh my gosh. And they said that the tone of voice was masculine and no accent. No. Wow. And I was like, hmm. Huh. Hmm. In my head, this is a joke, okay? In my head, I said, oh, I lose my accent. Oh. No, I want my accent back. <laughs> no, anyway, anyway, anyway. So, so she tells me that, and I said, "Did you get any message that you feel comfortable about it?" And she said, "Yes." And I never experienced again. It's huh. wild. You put it out into the universe. You wanted to experience it, and it's like we give it to you once. Yeah, <laughs> but also gave me the 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 thing that yes, I can do it, but I choose not pursue it that side. So it's like, a yes, you can do it. Now it's your choice what you are going to do. So for me, that's say, yes, you are capable. Everybody's capable, but I have the free will to choose it. I like that. So, yeah. And also, you know, you can tell you the spirits that you work with the rules of your house. So you don't do this or you don't talk in this way here. Or when somebody is in the house, like somebody's cleaning uh, you don't have to show. Can you imagine the woman can run away? So <laughs> <laughs> Don't scare the cleaner. So, so, you, so you just let them know the rules and they listen. It's not that you are playing with them, but you say, okay, I'm here to listen to you and pass messages, but know that I can do this right now. Know if I in another place. When I do mediumship, let's say that you come to see me and say, you know what? I would like to talk with Aunt Susie. Okay, so I let you know that I don't guarantee you that we are going to talk with Aunt Susie, but we are going to try. And usually people come to us for Aunt Susie because I didn't see her or I got into a fight. But Aunt Susie, she have an easy pass. She's happy on the other side. So this is more for the human that I want certain peace. If the person, the human, has been very stressed out about it, that cannot eat, cannot drink, sleep, la, 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 sometimes the spirit comes just to say the words to release for the sake of the human. That, that was, and, and I will have a different experience with different people. And I want to tell you this. I'm reading the cards for a woman, and I went to her house. This is 
years ago, no? And I go to her house and I felt something. But in my head, she went a tarot reading, right? So I have to do because I don't know if she believes in this or if she's going to say, get out of my house, no? <laughs> don't call anybody. <laughs> so I was feeling, and we said, I remember that was the kitchen table and we were sitting there and she's in front of me. And I was reading and everything is okay with the reading. And suddenly I saw a male there popping and I was keep reading and the mail is popping there. And I was like, um, okay, I said, I know we are talking about this, but I see this, this, and I stop doing the reading. And I start passing all the information and everything. And then I went back into the reading. I just remember I say, and I describe what I saw. And when I came back to finish the reading, like a continuation, if you want to put it like that, I look at her with tears, but with a smile. And she said, that was my father. Wow. And I didn't know that you will do that. And she said, you froze and you start telling me a lot of things that I was looking for the answer. I don't remember more than, is in this way, this person is here. This spirit is here. So wow. I think I went off topic. <laughs> but anyway. No, I think these uh, are great. Yeah. <laughs> So it's different ways. And at the same time that I'm doing that for someone, I'm learning something. It's like, um, we've heard this before. We are giving a message, but we're also receiving a message at the same time. Yes. Like for me, it was to clarify that, yes, I can do the tarot deck, the reading, but also if they come, they are welcome and I can, I can do it. I don't have to divide it. I call my readings a combo, tarot, <laughs> mediumship, and the pendulum. That's what it is. If you ask me, what do you do? It's a combo reading. Why? Because I do all that I frame it in one together. Why? Because it's the way that I receive it. There is people that they do one different, but I think my mission is give the whole in one. You're just open to whatever, however the message is coming to you. Mm -hmm. That's how you mm -hmm. frame it. Just whatever way the message gets to you, that's what you're going to provide. That's great, though. I think that's super organic and, like, intuitive. So versus you, you're not limiting yourself. Yeah. And I have another story. I never experienced doing Reiki healing. I received the, the beans of light that they are healing the person. But one time... I, I saw the mother of the person that I was working on. And I was like, this is not possible because this is healing. This is, this is all in my beginning. If you can see, I, I was going back and forth, but like, it's not possible, but I'm willing to do it. <laughs> and I remember I told him, I said, you know what? I know you talked to me about Reiki, but your mom is here. And that was looking now is that in the, in the time that I stop and say that, he was stalking his energy there. I don't know what the lady said, mm -hmm. but, and I say, she's gone. And then I was say he was more relaxed. It's like that blockage was moving, was close to the heart, mm -hmm. okay? So after that, uh, we were eating, and he said to me, I'm going to look for that. I say, what? <laughs> Looking for what? <laughs> like, he's going to show me something. What, what you say that my mom said that I need to look for, look, I don't know. So I didn't remember that. He remembered. And turns to be there was a box that uh, have things for him growing up that he so that it, when you forget things but that thing put you closer and when he found the box he called me i found it all excited oh, that's awesome that's really sweet so i've been experiencing different way how the mediumship is presented and i love it i love it i really do I love that we're meeting so many people that aren't afraid of it. They embrace it, and it actually brings them real joy. It makes me less afraid. <laughs> yes. Yes, this is beautiful. Like she's so joyful about it that I'm like, I love it too. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming on today and for sharing all of your amazing stories and insight, and this has been such an amazing episode. Like Ashley said, thank you guys very much. We appreciate it um, for sure. Uh, it's definitely been fun. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode of Three Haunted Podcasts with your host, Ashley Lunar Goddess. I'm John Thomas. 
And I'm Lila Kay. If you have any questions, episode suggestions, or comments, please email us at threehauntedpodcast at gmail.com. If you haven't done so already, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to all of our social media, and we'll catch you in the next episode. Until next time.